cold out here. Yeah, it is. It's like the South Pole. It's like the deep South Pole, if there was one. There isn't, though. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Underrated Podcast. This is a brand new podcast where we discuss films that we feel are underrated or perhaps underappreciated or even ones that just slipped under the radar that passed most people by. This show is a collaboration of friends, and together we are the Undercast Company. I just want to make a special shout out before we start our formal podcast, in that this is we're recording this at about the one year anniversary of our creating the Undercast Company and joining up, joining forces, really and yeah. becoming the Megazord that we are. Holy yeah, crap! Yeah, it was about a year ago. Really we all got together and we're like, ago? "Let's do this shit." I feel like it was just months ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah. Time so, flies when you're uh, recording I mean, podcasts. Recording podcasts <laughs> and just watching underrated movies. Yeah. So with that, hey, chat, clip that. Today's episode is about just friends. It is a 2005 comedy Christmas movie with Ryan Reynolds, Amy Smart, Anna Faris, and Chris Klein, to name a few. For me, this movie was one of the one of my um, go-to funny movies for during Christmas time um, when I was, you know, going on 14 years ago. And so with that, we shall discuss why it's underrated. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Who wants to, who wants to go first? Um, I'm, I guess I'll shoot. Uh, let's do it. Why All is right. it underrated, I'm going to say, is because it's Ryan Reynolds. And This was right. Right After when, Van Wilder that's and what I was all that. Say. Oh, man. That, that's oh, why. The that, rise yeah. of Van Wilder, Ryan Reynolds himself. And I'm assuming people didn't take him seriously. You know, it was a, he was doing funny comedy movie, funny haha movies, and, you know, not super maybe well-known for other stuff. And I'm assuming that's the reason why it's underrated. I mean, it's it's a good comedy. Don't get me wrong. It's That's what it is, a comedy. But as always, comedies aren't always, you know, the blockbusters that make the cash. So that's why yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm especially on. today, comedies are like at least this kind of comedy is pretty much non-existent. Yeah, I agree with that because that, that type of comedy was very. Uh, it's a two thousands thing. Like, yeah, I'll be I'll be real. Like uh, Van Wilder, you like know, oh, Just Friends, the, like, Ju- the Judd Apatow. House. Well, even Judd really not Judd Apatow movies. Like it's that same kind of like you know style. Yeah, there's like this just it's kind of like there's just something to it where you look at it and go, yeah, this came out like the two thousands. Like, yeah, you just have that feeling. But yeah, I agree, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, for me, yeah, it, 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 I think it's it leads from that Van Wilder situation. Ryan Reynolds, like you know, this was like fresh off of Van Wilder, and that, it's that kind of comedy. But uh, for me, in with this um, latest um, rewatching of it, I found that it's like actually very. It, besides it being f- very funny. It has these certain like little moments that like are in the background that just add more humor to it. Like there's one scene where when he gets thrown out of the bar towards the end and the bartender after he's like says like throws him out. And he's like, just stay out while he's walking away. He kind of si- kind of like lowly says, I've always wanted to say that. And then <laughs> so there's I like with this rewatch, it's there's kind of like all these funny moments that I like. It takes a couple of watches to like catch on to, and it makes it a lot more funnier. So I felt that that's like was pretty well thought out of too. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm. Uh, you guys might. I'm. Don't mind. I'm gonna just dive into my kind of full review here because I I do like this movie. Um, I've always kind of. I think I liked it a lot more watching it this time than I usually have because for me this is always that movie that was on Comedy Central a million times. Like growing up, you know, being a teenager, this movie was always fucking on Comedy yeah. Central. You'd you know pick it up and be like halfway through the movie. Like I didn't really know how this movie started until like a couple of years after I first saw it because it was you're just flipping channels late at night. Oh, it's on, and you know it'd be like the one of those late night Comedy Central movies where they're like uncensored. You can hear like Ryan Reynolds say the f word, and you're like fucking cool. I'm gonna watch that, but um. Yeah, I, it is. I do do catch a lot of subtleties, like you were saying, Ariel, that I'd never really caught before. But I think there's a lot of like really good supporting characters in this. 
obviously, you know, Ryan Reynolds and uh, Anna Faris and uh, Amy Smart all kill it. But the the cast, the uh, the supporting cast, is really fucking funny and hilarious. Like, I love these two friends that are a couple, you know. But it is very, very, like we were saying, 2005. It is yeah. definitely feels like there's no other time this movie could be. It is a little dated in some points, but it, I do like that it is a very, very self-aware movie. Like, it's, like, this is kind of a dumb comedy, but it knows that, it plays into it, it kind of, like, is almost a parody of a lot of those tropes that, like, goes along with it. Um, one of my favorite... It kind of, like, yeah, a parody of, like, um, and playing off of, like, um, National Lampoon, like, a mm-hmm. Christmas yeah. va- vacation. Yeah, and I, I like that it kind of plays on the tropes, uh, the trope of, oh, it's these two people and their friends, and usually those kind of movies, like, at the end of the movie, he'd be like, oh, I, I'm in love with you, even though the friends. There's a million movies like that where they the friends get together at the end. This kind of subverts that by having that happen as, like, the beginning, as the prologue for the actual movie. So you get that right out of the way, and then it's like, then it kind of develops in, into this whole other thing. And I really like that it just kind of, you know, it's all about, like, real emotions trumping the kind of fake bullshit that you put on, you know, trying to be the person they want and game playing, like... It's all about like how that's bullshit, and really you should just be yourself. And ma- and if the person is right for you, eat a bit, and they'll be with you. Yeah, I think going off of that is kind of like breaking the trope because usually that character, where the one that the friend that confesses his love, it's always like he's like welcome, it's someone like welcomed in open arms to like the whole community, and the whole community is like backing him up and stuff. Where in this one, like from the start, like he, he does the confession. And everybody was like laughing at him and stuff like that. And then even coming back to his hometown, like, you know, he's the main character. He's supposed to be like, you know, in quotations, like the hero character. And he just gets completely shit on by everyone and anything like in that in the small town that he's from. And so I think, yeah, playing on that was a very funny way and like i mean ryan reynolds killing it with the comedy and stuff like that and in a very ryan reynolds way that i think we, yeah it's because you, cause know, you, you, you see him be the cool guy are we first he's a nerd right yeah like for example he tries it out it doesn't work out so you would assume that when he comes back as a cool guy which he shows you because in la he's this cool guy he's dropping women left and right it's all working out for him you think now he's gonna come back as a cool guy in a normal movie as a cool guy he would show off his coolness, and then at the end, he wins the girl. And here, he tries to show off his coolness, but at every turn, something goes wrong. And that's where you get that 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 comedy, that funniness that you're not used to at the time. Mm-hmm. At the time when the movie came yeah. out. Because you're so used to everybody, oh, my God, look at the transformation. He went from ugly duckling to a beautiful swan. Oh, and, now, yeah, and now you're like, oh, man, this guy deserves everything. And here, he comes out. With a, he rents the Porsche to try to be cool, and then they, they crap on him there. He tries to show off the ice skating, but he gets, like, crappy skates, and he can't do it. Then his teeth get messed up, and he's back in a retainer again. And all of a sudden, he, he goes from being on the top dog to being back on the bottom where he was right before he left the town. And that that is... But they do it in a humorous way, so you don't feel like, oh man, poor guy, he's reliving this thing again. And because you kind of hate him too at the beginning, like you do, you do, because he completely he, he deserves he, it. He completely became a, a, a the guy that he didn't want to be. Yeah, the guy that was like, you know, mm-hmm. bullying him, making him feel bad, and he's teaching other people to be the same way. Like, no man, you can't care. You shouldn't be this. You should be like that. You should be aloof. You should. Uh, it's just about getting women and racking numbers and things like that, kind of for him. Yeah. But then eventually he falls back in love with a girl that he's always wanted and. And then all the shenanigans happen, and then him having the younger brother. Oh my god, I love yeah, the brother. Being one of the great supporting characters, and, and not just the brother, but having the mom be so aloof to everything <laughs> adds, <laughs> adds to the humor that that they do because it, it's just this it's it's this beautiful dynamic between the brother and the mom going with Ryan Reynolds' mm-hmm. humor, and it just they just bouncing off each other completely the whole time. Whenever they're all together, it's just funny because it's. It, it kind of gives you this familiar feeling of this is what it would be like if I was at home with my mom and my brother. And then you guys are saying little inside kind of jokes and your mom's kind of like, well, what's going on? What? 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 It just it's 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 a little familiarity that makes a movie go a long way. Yeah. I mean, coming from us being, you know, us or sorry, Derek, being Mexican. You know, you could get it. You could come into this, too. I'm sure it lives it's, in you, Southern you, California. You, as well. It's just a very <laughs> much like um, the dynamic between. You know, Ryan Reynolds is, and his brother is just so familiar to anybody. You oh, know? yeah. You my, that's like how I'm with my those, brothers. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I've heard stories. Yeah. <laughs> don't need to make this into a race thing. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Race wars. No, no, no. I'm sure it's, 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 yeah, it's among everybody. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. <laughs> Formally. <laughs> Only Mexicans will understand this Canadian film. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> About white people. Uh, <laughs> About white people. <laughs> but no. So, like, it's just a very familiar kind of, like, you know, you just, like, you slap your, your brother or sister, like, one moment, and then you're like, I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> yeah, that was, like, that was so spot on. Like, uh-huh. that's exactly how I was with my brothers growing up, even to this day, kind of. But, like, uh, one thing I wanted to kind of go off of what you were saying, Fred, about how you're like, oh, he's, like, this cool guy. And then he's like, oh, this isn't working. And then he tries to go the other way. He's like, oh, I've got to be, you know, like, and I think he says, like, the biggest pussy or whatever. Like, he's like, I've got to, like, you know, go and be, like, exactly like I was in high school. And, and, like, that's not working either because it's still not him. It's it's who he's just trying to be who he wants to be. And at the beginning, he's trying to be, he just wants to sleep with the girl that got away. She's not even, like, the girl he used to like. Mm-hmm. She's just this idea of the one that got away. And we all have the one that got away, you know? But he's like, oh, I'm going to get her because I never got to sleep with her in high school when I was a loser. And I'll be cool. And I'll validate myself. But by the end of the movie, that's not what he's about. He's not about, like, he's falling back in love with her just like he was in high school. He's not, like, in love with just sleeping with this idea of this girl. He is really in love with this girl again. I think I think I have to disagree with the whole like him just wanting to sleep with her kind of thing, because like the moment that he sees her at the bar, like the way that he says her name, like it's just totally like it's just it's a relapse of his love kind of like coming back. Well, I think maybe it's under the surface. Yeah, like his, yeah. His, his, he tries to yeah. like he tries to convince himself like oh yeah I just want to like you know have sex with her and then one you know a hit and done kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah. Because yeah, he doesn't really like that shows a lot of him as a character, and so, those are the things that I really admire about this movie. Is because if you look past all the the lack of identity and like you know, there's a lot of movies that came out around this era that were like this, and it's just another Comedy Central movie that you'd see. There is a lot of cool things that it, it does with this uh, with Ryan Reynolds as a character, and because you guys were talking about how he, at first he you know one thing he becomes the person that he used to hate when he was still in high school because those are the kinds of people that used to bully him and treat women, you know, the way that he does now. And then there's the other thing of, oh, she's not even another girl that he used to like now. It's just another girl in his life. I like that because it, it shows that there is some sort of character. He 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 doesn't want to admit to himself that he really does like her. He doesn't. He, he, the reality is, is that he kind of hates himself for what he's doing. That's why he went through that whole transformation process and why he's trying to radically change himself. So I thought that was cool. And those little things as a character, like character studying Ryan Reynolds' character, I'm saying character a lot, but that's what, those are the little things that I like about this, this movie. Well, I mean, that that's the thing that I was going to say. Like, uh, like I understand the character because in the sense of he, when, before he does his change, right? And I think this happens to a lot of men. You tend to, overcompensate maybe on your gentlemanness thinking yeah. that you know you need to be like the perfect gentleman He's every a nice time guy. yeah the super nice guy and there's a comedy to find in that too yeah That's why I think but but no what i'm saying but works. like like what makes sense is is when he changes he instead of thinking like well what wasn't working or what should i change or how should i be you tend to have this idea as and it happens to males that women aren't dating me not because of how nice i was but more like how people want to be the bad guy, how you got to be cool and how you how the way you're supposed to treat that, that, that whole friend zone thing, that, that concept of like, oh, it's because I was friended and that's why it's not going to change. Instead of being like, well, it's because this person, even though I might feel attracted to them or have feelings for them, they just don't reciprocate those feelings. Instead of thinking that way, you think, no, it's because I got put in the friend zone. I see what kind of guys they like. They're like the bad boys, yeah. the ones that treat them like crap because, you know, you it's hear like them complain. Song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do the good girls always fall for the bad guys? <laughs> yeah, and that, that's a that's a concept. Gwen, you know? is that you? That's where a lot of the comedy comes from too, because yeah. it's it's the, we as an audience member, you know that that's stupid. Yeah, but and this well, is just an extreme wait, what? version. Well, of you, it. you know what you, you answer, what, yeah. what, if you watched I, I, it. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I want to say if you watched it at the time when it came out, you know, if, if you're about that age. It, it probably really hits home. Very of its because you know time. you're you're in oh, high yeah. school times and things like that, so it would probably hit more more home in the idea of like oh i get where he's coming from i see what it is as an older person now you you know it's a lot more funnier than anything mm-hmm. but at that age you were probably like oh shit yeah i know what this feels <laughs> like oh being put in like a, a, a being a, a 
A lamp? A non-sexual object? Oh, fuck yeah. I know what it's like to be friended. Oh, this shit sucks. Oh, poor guy. Like, you, you feel for him. You go, fucking poor guy, dude. I've been there. But then, you know, as he grows and he becomes a cool guy, you're like, yeah, I can see that happening. I could see yeah. doing that. Mm-hmm. I could try to be the this fucking cool guy who doesn't give a shit and just kind of goes around and you just, you know, lay in pipe anywhere and stuff like that because that's that happens. Hell, I've even done that. Well, I went well, home brag right here. No, 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 no home brag like that. But I'm saying like I've I've gotten to the point where, and I don't know if every male does, but I've gotten to the point where you go, you know what? It doesn't pay off to be a cool guy, a nice guy, you know, like that. No, no, no. You gotta be the guy that doesn't care. That's just like whatever is and. Fuck it if it doesn't work sometimes. Yeah, but, but it only works yeah. because you're trying to find that type of person. You're not finding a serious relationship yeah. or things like that. But I mean, like, why? And do, I, why and do I, good girls like bad guys? Exactly. Like? And but I think that's that's where you go with the the movie at the end. Like, he wasn't finding the right people because mm-hmm. he was acting this way he acted. When he finally figures out who he is inside, what kind of person he is, it finally works out for him in the way of he can finally make the relationship that he he always wanted. Yeah, because this could have been like a. Kind of problematic movie, but they actually yeah. managed to do a really like good like job mm-hmm. with it, you know. So maybe going off of um that this um wide variety of um su- supporting characters that we have, let's get to the Anna Ferris of it all and talk about her character Samantha well, she was James. Great. She's great. <laughs> I she, you, she's, yeah, oh, I was gonna say I always find her hilarious. I don't know about you guys, but I always find her funny. All the way yeah. from the scary movies and all the other stuff she does, I just think she has this. Uh, comedic chops I guess is a yeah. she's very uh, like she just doesn't really care like she's just kind of like fuck it dude I'm doing this just because like like she has a good time with. It. I feel like in the 2000s like especially like this type of film hmm. I feel like scary movie and this one and then I, th- I know she did a couple other things she was super aloof and she just had a good time with things like like because I mean especially the scary movie films where she's just like ah, it's you like know, absurdist like, and she like it's absurd and she's absurd. just having a yeah. good time and this one was just Especially the opening scene where she's all like fucked up and all that stuff. Like she's just, like she's giving it her all, but also having a good time with it. Yeah, yeah. and she's a really good foil for Ryan Gosling, who's hilarious Ryan. in a really. Oh my god, I always you do that. Subconsciously said that. <laughs> I, I do subconsciously think about Ryan Gosling a lot, but yeah. R- Ryan Reynolds, um, he's so deadpan in this movie. He's like got that different kind of like deadpan. Like he'll say something like really subtly, and it'll be hilarious. Where she's like going so over the top, and they play against each other really fucking well. And that, like she also plays really well against Amy Smart, who's also kind of like more deadpan and even killed. Whereas her and a couple other characters are just like these over the top hilarious people. And yeah, and I, I, I like going off of that. I like how you do have that dynamic that she gets to play off of just the deadpan of Ryan Reynolds, especially with those um, scenes where she, she he's dragging her to the car mm-hmm. and like he's like, you know what, you're right, you're like this, and she's like, no, I'm not right, like I did, and just busts out. But then she also gets to play with the over the top character with his brother too, who is also over the top. And I uh, one of my favorite scenes in this is like when she starts laughing at Ryan Reynolds and like the brother kind of like does this like barrel roll onto onto the bed next to her and starts laughing with him her too. And it's yeah, like that was that's a good little funniest. moment. Yeah, it's like going on. Yeah, like those small moments that play to add this like comedy an additional layer layer of comedy that's really funny but yeah she just i just loved her embodiment of just the most craziest woman that you could yeah, you yeah could like she's like and paris she, hilton cranked up a little bit yeah, yeah. like a, also, like a britney spears paris hilton yeah like, a very 2005 yeah. britney spears yeah, yeah. yeah and it's what it's hilarious Not 2007 thankfully yeah, yeah. no but it's hilarious because then it's like when she's in the airplane and she goes uh i'm gonna have i asked for Mahi mahi tuna, but I'm on a diet, so I just got one mahi. <laughs> and, and then she proceeds to put it in the airplane microwave with the tin foil, with the tin foil, tin and goes, "Well, they didn't say you, you couldn't put it in without tin foil." So it's those. It kind of sets up for where she's at, and it just makes it hilarious the whole time. I mean, it's just it's it's all you can say. Like she is just hilarious throughout the whole damn movie. And Every scene she had, and then the taser that she brings into in both instances just make just make these hilarious moments. But yeah, no, I want to actually talk about a deleted scene. Like if you watch like one of the deleted scenes, um, to her story is actually kind of funny. Is that in one of the deleted scenes, like, so she leaves Ryan Reynolds in the sm- from the small town and goes back to Hollywood. And then she ends up 
making a, actually a fantastic breakup CD where she, it's actually she's very artistic and is because her heart got broken and stuff and then um so when Ryan Reynolds comes back he finds out all about this and like oh man you did your job awesome job and stuff and then um uh, uh, then I guess Alanis Morissette comes and at, at the time of the filming like Ryan Reynolds and Alanis Morissette were actually dating and so she just slaps him like how dare you because he's the one that broke her heart but cre- that like she ended up creating this like amazing CD huh. so that's one of the funnier nice. things too yeah yeah but no I, I think it's a overall I'd say I I, I really liked it um Al- Alan uh, did you you liked it right wow. I, I want to hear what you because you haven't wow. gone too in depth into it I want to hear. Oh man, so I am excruciatingly picky with comedies. Like I fucking hate most comedies. This like, is true. Ninety percent of the time, like I despise them. Especially, in, I know we're talking about the two thousands era, but like a lot of them I hated, and that's what kind of made me like go into like the hate of like just in general. But this one was solid. I mean, I, if it wasn't for like Anna Ferris and like Ryan Reynolds, I probably would have overlooked it. I remember, again, watching it on Comedy Central and being like, all right, it's on, whatever. Because I would always watch, like, Dogma because I would always put Dogma on repeat. And I was like, all right, I'll watch Just Friends. And it was good. Like, I enjoyed it. I was like, okay, you know. It's not, like, a movie that I would go rewatch all the time. It's just a movie where I'm like, yeah, I enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah, I'm on. The, I think I'm on about the same page. Yeah, like I'm not like, oh man, we gotta watch it tonight. We gotta pop just friends, and it's kind of one of those like throwaways for me, where like I'll watch it. And I'm like, okay, that's it. I yeah, don't when it comes it. on Comedy Central, I'll watch it. You know, but like it's not a movie that I'm like telling everybody about. But I like it. Yeah, I mean, like if it's there, I'll watch it. Yeah, I'll give it it's a, a good movie. I mean, I'm talking about how much I like it this whole time, but mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, for me, it's on, like, the rotation of Christmas movies. So, it, it it's, but then again, I do watch a lot of Christmas movies during Christmas time. So, but I think, it, for me, it is worth the, at least the initial watch. So, yeah. Yep. So, then, why do you guys think this movie did so poorly with critics? It's like, Ariel, I think you said 42% in Rotten Tomatoes. It's, it's like, mid a mid-ground. It's like a 6.2, um... 47, but on Is that Metac- 6.2 IMDb? IMDb. Oh, okay. Um, 47 on Metacritic. So, I think it's just because what we've talked about probably because, like, you know, Ryan Reynolds, it's, it was, like, seen possibly as another Ryan Reynolds comedy. And, um... Yeah, those mid two thousand comedies did get you know ragged on by mm-hmm. critics a bunch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was, a, that was a tough part. You know, it, it seems like you always get waves of stuff, you know. You got you got some some years where everybody loves comedies, some years they hate comedies, yeah. some years they love dramas, some years, it just depends on where the movie yeah. falls. And this one tends to fall in a pack of. I feel like there were a lot of comedies at the time. It was really oversaturated. Yeah, and and if it wasn't good enough to like fly in your face, yeah. it ends up becoming more of a cultish type comedy mm-hmm. where you end up watching it kind of like um, old school or yeah. Step Brothers or things where you. At the time, they did not do well at all. They don't do well, but over time, as people watch them, as you kind of learn the quotes, the little favorite parts, and things like that, it just kind of ends up becoming a little better than it was. Yeah. But it's never gonna have that critical acclaim yeah. ever. It's like that word of mouth thing. Yeah. Because uh, old school, I remember at the time. Oh my fucking! I've never seen it. I, I'll get to it one day, but I've never seen it. But I, I call it. I kind of call those years like the. The, the, like from the year 2000 to like 2006, seven ish, mm-hmm. I call it like the college comedies. Yeah. Where like the like, like mid to late 90s, you had all these high school like comedies, like romantic comedies. And then it seems like when the 2000s came in, those graduated into college where you'd hear some 41 in the trailer almost every single time. <laughs> Why is Matt Damon in this band? All that stuff. Yeah. And I, and I honestly think it's because just. It's just that they're very niche that they're going for a, a certain audience. Like, I honestly think like around that time, like just friends and uh, not another teen movie and Van Wilder and, you know, Malibu's most wanted all those kind of movies were geared towards people who enjoyed the high school comedies of the nineties and are graduating on mm-hmm. into the two thousands into like these type of yeah. films where they're kind of like, 
you know, this is my own opinion, but they're kind of throwaways where like, hey, what's the next thing we can get into the box office? Like what, what or to the movies, what we can make some quick money on mm. kind of thing. I'm not saying just friends is that, but it's in that criteria. And then after that, it came, it became the Judd Apatow stuff. Like that's where that yeah. humor has evolved into. But I think that's, that's the reason why it was critically panned. It's just the same thing with horror what, in that time as well. Horror films in that time were like very throwaways where I was like, oh, yeah, some of these are not that great. And da, 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 but I think that's just my theory. Yeah. But. Yeah. that makes sense. Because like, so, you know, nowadays there's been very few comedies. Like there's been all these, you know, think pieces about how comedy is like a dying genre and blah, blah, blah. And well, like, I think with, like, like pure like, comedy. Yeah. Oh, pure comedy. Like, well, I mean, and like where you have something like Booksmart this year, which is a pretty solid movie, but it did terribly financially. But critically, everybody mm-hmm. fucking loved it because there's not that movies like it anymore. If like Booksmart had come out ten years ago, it would have been just a movie right. that everybody. But yeah, what he was saying, what Alan was saying about it's similar to what is happening with horror movies or what has happened to with horror movies, and it, I think it will continue to happen. It's that certain influx of those same kind of movies that create this certain lack of identity, and I think for me personally, that's what really caused this movie because you know especially with the title too and it's starring ryan goss of <laughs> ryan Got reynolds him. Man, i, I loved too. ryan reynolds and drive no am i right guys <laughs> right ryan reynolds and you know it is it's very much it has a lack of identity and because there's a lot of other movies that are of this same genre and i think as time goes on movie like this, this movie just friends it kind of is still standing while other movies of its time and of its genre like alan was saying the college comedies were you know we're starting to forget about them this movie is still being remembered by us because we actually liked it and it still holds up to this day but at the time it was just and produced and put out in a way where it was just grouped along with those yeah. kinds of comedies nobody's going back and watching rewatching euro trip in 2019 no. exactly yeah oh what i was gonna say though was I feel like that type of comedy, though, does very well on television. Yeah. Because, like, this type of comedy style, like college, like the college comedy kind of thing, like Van Wilder, Just Friends and all that, does very well on TV, especially one of me and Fred's favorite, one of our favorite shows, Blue Mountain State. Oh. Fucking amazing oh, show. So Hilarious. I love it. Like, I always go back to that show. You know, Alan See, Richardson he- is like the that kind of Ryan Reynolds type of character in that, in that show. And I feel like that's where that type of humor flourishes, is in television. Some secret Stephen Amell in there, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah boy. It? Yeah, but yeah. it's just because they all, they do, like I said, it, the lack of identity, it also is attributed from how flat it looks, and that's why it looks, it's like a TV movie. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So a lot of it is it just really relies on the acting and the writing and, and the jokes, of course. It's the comedy. It has to be funny. And I, I could really see, I know it's, it's already starting to happen. I think it's going to be more prevalent is movies like, because you were saying like this is a TV movie. movie. These movies like this not really being theatrical release, moving to Netflix, Hulu, like those kind of original yeah. movies, you know, like probably Disney Plus now we're going to see that it's going to become like that's where all the romantic comedies and like the teen comedies are going to mm-hmm. move onto these streaming services because they're, ho- they're built to be like where you have the best audience for this as like a TV just Oh, throw on net just for, ends is on Netflix. It's Christmas. Throw it on. Yeah, it's like having like uh, for example, like Big Mouth or things of that nature, where normally you would watch them maybe on, I don't know, like Fox maybe or something or yeah, something yeah, at late night. Yeah, now now a lot of those things are getting like you said, just right on Netflix, man. Let's go, and then that's where you're gonna yeah. watch. So then, uh, do you guys think that this movie's reputation is gonna change with it being on Netflix? And it's had a, have over the years has gotten a lot, you know, more people like it. Do you guys see that continuing? I, I think it's still going to be the same. It is like a cult kind of movie. Mm-hmm. You're going to, you know, uh, depending on the time, maybe if, if comedies are really in, people might check it out, you know, and they might scope it out more. But I think it's still going to be the same. It is. It's a cult movie. You're, it's going to have its following, like solid following mm-hmm. that are just going to go back and watch it. And it might gain a little bit of people here and there. But I don't think it's going to be some kind of cult thing like, I don't know, like Rocky Horror or like uh, the Evil Dead series or things like that that, that – keep amassing people as years go on i just think it's it's gonna be where it's at and it'll have its fans that follow it maybe people that want to see another ryan reynolds movie his older stuff might watch it but in terms of it like blowing up as a cult i don't think so okay i agree with that i think it's gonna be in the same kind of like style of where like it's gonna be moved around it, it, i mean now with streaming services it's gonna be like hey did you 
saw I saw this movie the other day kind of thing. Just like during its time, people would pass the DVD around, just like old school. So like I, I would I would say it's gonna probably be in the same kind of criteria of cult like waiting which is another Ryan oh, Reynolds yes. oh my god Ryan waiting. Gosling is so great in that Ryan Gosling was amazing and, yeah, and just uh, like and waiting movie, exactly waiting waiting Waiting's which great. I think is I'll be honest is better than this mm-hmm. it, just because yeah. I, I, that was like that and clerks were like my bible when I started working customer service so I was just <laughs> like I relate to these movies very much but it, nowadays if you bring up waiting people might be like uh, oh yeah I think I re- man I think I remember that one with Ryan Reynolds so you don't know, blah blah blah. But I think it's I think if if it's on now it's streaming, people might be like, hey, you know, they'll give it a try. I think I'll have a smaller cult following. You know, like Fred said, it's not gonna be Evil Dead, it's not gonna be, you know, Princess Bride or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. So uh, any other final thoughts? No, I just I think I I would say I would recommend this movie. Um, you can watch it at Christmas, or you can watch it's it's, but it's not like a, a Christmas. Like, it is a Christmas movie, but it's not like you can only watch it at Christmas. You it's know, like Batman Returns. I think it feels yeah, like, like Christmas. Batman it, it feels like Christmas. It feels, it feels like, like Christmas, Christmas but because but you see the snow and you see him go back but, for the but holidays. But you can really watch family. it at any time. Yeah, it's, it's not like you're in a scared stupid Christmas where you can only movie. watch it at a certain time. Yeah, exactly. Either. It's it's not meant to be just a Christmas movie. I think it's just because be a Hanukkah movie. Exactly. Like the next one we're going to talk about, Arthur Christmas. I couldn't see watching that at any other point in the year. Wait, I thought we were going to talk about Batman v Super. Superman. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Hit that subscribe button on your podcasting app to make sure you are always following and being notified when a new episode of this show comes out. And continue to hear us babble. And please, if you are willing to give us a rating and a review, it really helps and lets us know what else we, you'd like to hear from us in this podcast because we can always only get better with your help yeah please please because uh, we'd like to get a sponsor eventually that way we can upgrade our equipment <laughs> Casper Mattress well, is where you at Casper uh, Purple Mattress uh, Hams for um, Men Hams hey Dollar Shave Club I use your product come on hey believe me we sell ourselves cheap come on everybody mm-hmm. whatever you want but honestly no we, we would love to hear from everybody from listening because yeah, uh, we've I, gotten I, a, a few recommendations um, in our emails so yes please, please send those recommendations coming, coming. 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 Out there. I know somebody mentioned uh, Doctor Who the movie which and, was, and uh, it's on the list it's, and we'll it's, fig- it's there we'll get to it we'll, we'll point, get to but it we appreciate you guys yes you know uh, throwing out recommendations we, we love it we yeah, really we do, we, we do we listen to you guys, guys and we want to hear more from you mm-hmm. so once again we are the undercast company made up of myself Ariel and my brother Sergio hi Fred Torres hey what's up and Alan Torres I saw dude and Derek McDuff the one and only and we also have a uh, comic DC and convention content on our Nerd Incorporated YouTube page mm-hmm. and Nerd Incorp on social medias. We have gaming and tech content on our District Six YouTube and District and at District Six on social media. Check that out. Yes. And me and Derek have Marvel discussions on our Marvel podcast, Infinity Stones and Dragon Bones, which we're hoping to touch on the ending of the Jeff Loeb era soon yep then yep. also uh we were kind of uh, just throwing it around before we recorded um we've been really into the mandalorian oh, we might yeah. do something about that yeah. that'll uh, be coming up soon let us know what you think if you're interested in hearing us talk about mandalorian would be really you know we, we're all in love with it we love the show yeah. so yeah, yeah, let, yeah. let us know so we have new things yeah on the horizon and we'll keep you guys posted once they pop up so with that we'll be back soon with another film so stay tuned and thanks for being amazing Later. See you in the life. As my boy says, Kevin Smith, have a week. <laughs>